Hey guys, today we are looking at Human in the Loop to understand how it allows humans to collaborate with AI to provide better, more accurate outcomes. And to demonstrate this, I have two versions of the exact same workflow. And the only difference between them is that one of them implements Human in the Loop while the other doesn't. And what we are going to do is we are first going to go through the one that does not implement Human in the Loop so that we can see its shortcomings. And after that, we'll go to the one that does so that we can see how it can prevent or eliminate these shortcomings by leveraging it. So the workflow we have here is a researcher workflow that's going to generate a research report for us based on the topic that we provided. And it consists of three agents which are each responsible for for different parts of the workflow, right? We have the key points generator. It's gonna take in the topic that we provided, come up with key points for that particular topic using SERP API, which is a tool to search the web. And then it's gonna pass those key topics to the sections generator. That's gonna use the key points as a reference to generate the sections or the outline of the report and then pass it to the report generator, who's then going to use the sections generated to craft the overall report for us, which is then gonna be passed to this code node. This code node is gonna convert the report into a markdown file and then pass it back to us through Telegram. So let's quickly run this workflow so that we can see it in action and identify the shortcomings, right? For that, I'm gonna click on test workflow so that our Telegram trigger can start listening for messages. And I'm gonna head over to Telegram and you can see here that I already have a message drafted for this example. It says, I'm seeking potential business ideas centered on an LLM based agentic framework that automates processes for small to medium sized enterprises. I'm just going to click on enter. This should kick off the uh, workflow and that's what it did. You can see that our key points generator is searching the web to generate key points. And once it's done, it's going to pass those to sections generator and the sections generator is going to start generating the sections for our report. And that's what's happening now. And you can see that it passed the sections to our report generator and our report generator uses these sections or outlines to craft the overall report for us. And once it's done, it's going to pass it to the code node here that's gonna convert the whole report into a markdown file, which is then going to be sent to us through Telegram. It did just that, right? I'm gonna get back to Telegram and you can see here that now we have a markdown file sent to us that contains the report we have here. So I'm gonna click on it. Let me close these first. Okay, and I'm going to click on open preview so that we can see the actual form of this markdown. You can see we have a title, we have the introduction, we have the main body sections and the, finally the conclusion, right? So we have a nice little report compiled for us. But what if I was not actually interested in this section here or this section here, right? Or even this particular subsection within this section and I wanted to add a different subsection for the LLM to research about for this particular topic. When we go to our workflow, what we can see is that the sections for this report is done or generated by this agent here, right? Which is in the middle of this whole process or this workflow. So there is no real way currently for us to provide feedback does have control over the final decision and sections generated by this agent. Therefore, the only time we'll find it out is when the report is generated. And you can imagine that would be time and resource consuming, right? Especially in a real application. You can imagine where, for example, I have this one here just to demonstrate it. This is an actual example of a deep research. And here what we have is a workflow broken down into two parts, right? The first part is responsible for creating or generating the sections. And the second part is the one that's going to execute the research on each of those sections. And for each section, we are going to hit this workflow in a real application may be up to 15 sections, right? And that means that we would be running this workflow 15 times. And therefore you can imagine how inefficient it would be for us to just say, oh, I wish we didn't have this section or this section is redundant. I wish it also included this subsection or that subsection, right? After all, we'll be doing so many searches on the web just to gather information and without having to mention the amount of LLM calls that we will do for it to process the whole request. So that's why it's a huge disadvantage for the current architecture that we have here, right? And apart from that, we just have less control over the process and thus it will be less likely for us to get the outcome that we desire. And now that we understand the shortcomings of this version, let's actually see how we could have solved it by using human in the loop. And what we have here is actually the exact same 
workflow the exact same flow as i mentioned in the beginning of the video right the only thing that is different here is that we added these three nodes to implement human in the loop right this one this one and this one and we also added a new section within the prompt so that we can provide the feedback to the sections generator when necessary and we'll get into detail of this in a bit but for now let's actually execute this workflow and see what the difference is going to be by being able to provide feedback for the sections generated and being able to do it as many times as we want until we are fully satisfied so without wasting any more time let's get to it just a quick interjection so i have a school community which is completely free so feel free to join we are currently over 2000 members and i upload all the resources i show in my videos including this one to my community so you can get access to them you can just head over to the youtube video and resources section and click on the corresponding video to find the resources that you want access to right for instance this one here you can just download it and head over to your canvas and look for the three dotted button and then click on import from file then select the file that you just downloaded and you'll have it imported so with that let's continue with the video all right so for this i'm going to click on test workflow once again and then switch the chat window okay and we have the exact same message here drafted as well so i'm just going to click on enter and let's see what happens now we have the exact same thing going on as we did with the one previously right we have key points generating the key points for us all right now the section generator got the key points and it started generating the key points but this time we're like hey brother wait a second let me first check what sections you generated am i happy if i approve it you can continue with the flow as you did in the previous one but if not i'm gonna pass you my feedback right so let's take a look at what that looks like we have this message sent to us on telegram and what we see here are the sections okay i'm going to click on provide your feedback so that we can see it more clearly this is the window that we have right now and here let's say i wanted to remove financial analysis and uh, reporting solutions right please remove the following section and i'm just going to click on submit now so that i can showcase how we can do it as many times as we want we submitted it and now it's got the feedback from this route here and now it's regenerating and refining the output let's take a look at what we got this time so previously we told it to remove the financial analysis bit right and you can see here now what it did was it removed the financial analysis and added something else in its place and of course we could also tell it through prompting to not add if explicitly specified but in this case it did exactly what we want so i'm happy with it right i'm going to click on provide my feedback and if I want, I could also say, hey, uh, don't add any other uh, section through the feedback itself, right? So I'm going to go back and look for something else this time. And let's say, so within workflow management automations, I would say within workflow automations, remove uh, this one, okay? Remove, remove the benefits subsection, okay? And maybe we can also try to tell it to add something else and also add... A section for any and uh, any and based opportunities for example and let's see what we are gonna get now so we'll click on submit this should pass it back to the sections generator as you can see and the sections generator is gonna reflect on the uh, current sections by looking at our feedback and it's gonna refine it and regenerate it and let's see what we get once it's done all right perfect we got the new sections let's take a look at what we have this time so previously we told it to remove the benefit section or the subsection for workflow management automation and we also told it to add a section for any and based opportunities and it, it did exactly that so i'm really happy with this and therefore i'm going to say perfect let's please proceed and when I do that, what's going to happen this time is it's actually going to continue with the workflow and do the exact same thing it did with the previous one. And it's going to proceed with the rest of the workflow just like it did. It's going to generate the report now, but with the sections we want. And now we got the final report sent to us over Telegram. Let's take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. All right, so we have the title again, introduction, right? And then we can see workflow management automation we don't have the benefits section we only have the description section then we have the recruitment automation and we can also see that we have the section that we wanted to add 
for the edit and based opportunities. So this is how we can collaborate with AI within automations to have more granular control over the whole process. And in this case, you can see I was able to give feedback to the sections generator on the sections that it generated. And I could provide feedback as many times as I want until I'm fully satisfied with what it has generated right and of course this is just one example of human in the loop right we can have it implemented in so many places where you don't want to solely rely or fully rely on ai to make the decision for instance let's come up with an example let's say you have a customer support chatbot right and for refund based policies you want a human agent to decide or make the final decision so what you can do is you can implement human in the loop so that the ai agent would escalate these requests with the details to a human agent for the human agent to decide whether or not to proceed with the refund process or not or let's say you have an agent where you can tell it to for instance purchase something online a holiday or a product right you don't want it to go and make its own decision to whether or not purchase it you want to make sure that you are the person that's going to decide whether or not to actually purchase that particular thing and the role of the ai there is just to find something that you might be interested in purchasing so those are two other examples where you can have human in the loop of course you can implement this in countless ways and in any way you would like for example I could have even decided to look at what the points that were generated by this key points generator agent and add another human in the loop layer here and even in the report generator I'm just giving an example it may not make sense but I'm just saying that you can do it any way you like and you can have as much control as you want all right now let's dig deeper and understand what's going on under the hood so what we have here is a simple telegram trigger we send in a message this triggers the workflow and then the first agent that we have here is a key point generator agent and the prompt is very simple of course this is just to demonstrate human in the loop we are telling it to list concise structured key points and angles about the following topic and we also tell it to use the SERP API tool to help it find up-to-date information and we pass it the context of the current date right then this generates the key points for the particular research topic and then this gets passed to the sections generator and let's take a look at what we have within the sections generator so we have a again a simple prompt here right so we are telling it to use the following notes as a reference and the notes refers to the key points and then we have created a professional report outline for this topic which we pass through telegram right of which by the way we can see populated to the right side of the screen and you can see how we have the topic here right and then the key points above and then we just tell it to structure the outline as the following right these are just very basic prompts and this is exactly the same all the way here as the one we had in the previous example right when we look at the sections generator we have the exact same thing but what's different in this agent is that we also like i said earlier have this section here and what this does is what we see here is a javascript syntax that does this it says if feedback is populated then add this section to the prompt but if not just add an empty string and you can see that it's denoted by this so we have this question mark here this says oh is json feedback empty or populated if it's populated add this section to the prompt right and then there's this uh what co column is this two dots i forgot the name to this but uh, this basically separates the condition so this is if the condition is true if the condition is negative or false it's going to add this to the prompt so when we first hit the sections generator before providing any feedback you can imagine that this is going to be empty right because obviously there are no feedback yet so it's always going to pass in an empty string but when we provide a feedback then what's going to happen is the next time it hits the sections generator this is going to be populated therefore it's going to pass in this section here and you can see what we have here is that the current sections that was already generated and below is the feedback regarding the sections above update the current sections accordingly and we also pass it the feedback that we provided in telegram right through this window here but for now let's imagine that this is the first time we are hitting it so of course there is no feedback right so let's continue with it so the sections generator generates a section okay and then it passes it to the human feedback right this is a node provided by any and it's a built-in solution for us to implement uh, a human in the loop and you can find it here when you click on this plus button here you can see that there's a section called human in the loop 
and and it and does not only provide it for telegram but it has many other built-in solutions for this in this case i use telegram since i was using telegram to send message to this workflow and what it's going to do is it's going to send this message and let's take a look at what we have inside so we have the chat id we get this id from the telegram trigger that's what we are doing here right we are selecting the telegram trigger and then passing it the id and then we are passing in the message and the message are the sections that the section generator generates okay and then we are setting the response type here there are different kinds of responses you can uh, provide for example you have an approval so you can either approve or disprove it right in our case it's free text so that we can provide a written feedback and we also have custom forms and then what we have here is a message button label you have additional options here as well where you can add different details to the feedback form but for me i just decided to add a message button label and uh, it's called it says provide your feedback and when we go to telegram you can see that that's what the name of this button was so it's provide your feedback so once we provide our feedback what's going to happen is it's going to hit the feedback classifier the feedback classifier is going to check our response or our feedback is going to decide whether or not it is approved it indicates approval or it indicates request for modification right and in our case if you remember we have these three inputs or these three feedbacks where we said please remove the following so it first hit the refine category therefore it routed the workflow through that direction and then the second one we have again another request for modification and finally in the third one we said perfect let's proceed so what it did was it continued with the rest of the workflow but for the first two what it did was it went through this refined path and it hit this feedback field node right it's a set node and within this we have the necessary fields to pass to the sections generator to refine its output okay so what we have is the output which refers to the key points that were generated by the key points generator right let me show you what i mean we have this guy here we're taking the output of this and adding it to this set node so that when the next time we hit the sections generator it can do the same thing as it did for when it got the data from the key points generator since this time the data is not coming from the key points generator and but from the feedback field what i tried to do is i tried to replicate the exact same output that this agent provides within this set node hence why i have this output field right so they can work with both of these nodes and the next field we have here is the current sections field these are basically the current sections that we have generated right and finally we have the feedback field where we pass in our feedback and what happens now is these fields will be passed to the sections generator and when we look at the prompt this time since we have the feedback populated what's going to happen is it's not going to show this empty string or add this empty string to the prompt, but this time it's going to add this feedback section here where we have the current sections generated by it, right? And then also our feedback and the agent will be able to use this to refine its next output. And then that's what it's going to do. It's going to generate an output. It's going to pass it back to the human feedback node, right? And if we didn't approve of it, this loop would continue until we are fully satisfied. But let's say we did accept it. This feedback classifier reads the text or analyzes the feedback and determines that it's an approval. So what it's going to do is it's just going to allow the workflow to proceed with the next step where we're going to this time pass in the sections that we want to the report generator for it to finalize the report. And the prompt here is again, very simple. So we just told it to generate a report based on this particular topic and use the following outline that was generated by our sections generator, right? And we also here told it to output in this following JSON format with two fields, report title and format. The report title is basically the ones we see here. You can see each report had its own title based on the topic. Then we have the content. This is what the content of the report is. And then we're giving it some simple rules here, telling it to ensure the outline is addressed thoroughly and so on. And that's basically it, right? And we pass it to the code node here. The code node converts it to a markdown file and after that that gets passed to this node here which sends us the markdown file through telegram so that's pretty much it and with that we have human in the loop covered i hope you enjoyed this video and that this video taught you something if you did enjoy this video a like or a comment would really be appreciated as it really helps me get this video out to more people and again feel free to join the school community we are over 2000 members now i'll be uploading all my resources including in this video and all other videos here you can find it in the youtube video and resources section just go to the designated post and you can find the corresponding workflow template there for instance the one here we have one right what you'll have to do is just go ahead and download the 
workflow template that you want and go to your workflow or your canvas you can then navigate to this three dotted button here click on import from file once you do that just select the file that you just downloaded and you will have the workflow imported to the canvas and that's pretty much it but with that guys take care see you on the next video